to Pokemon Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is a real thing worth a Google. It is episode four hundred and eighty-three of the podcast, Bunny. FYI, it says Project Twenty Twenty Five. Just chatting as our uh, oh, does it still? title right now yeah yeah i lost where those titles are and i haven't been able to figure out how to fix it yet okay just thought i'd uh let you know in case you didn't know uh this is episode 483 of the podcast which means that uh, logically we have done 482 episodes to lead up to this one and it's not like you're gonna go to our soundcloud and check so just take our word for it this is the 483rd episode uh hello everybody welcome back to the big show we had a wee accidental bit of a break first bunny got sick uh and then i booked a big old show last sunday that was freaking amazing and also if we're being honest uh, and I can only speak for myself here, but uh, I'm suffering from from a bout of senioritis. 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 You know, like when you know you you were a freshman in high school, and you were a sophomore in high school, and you were a junior in high school, and it's like, ah, oh, thank God I'm a senior. I'm almost done, and so yeah. you, you start. I don't know. We're, we're we're ending the podcast in October, so we have just a handful of episodes left. And there's a part of me that is so busy and so heavily medicated that sometimes when it comes to the podcast, I feel like Paul Rudd's character in Wet Hot American Summer. Like, like I'm podcasting's Orange Cassidy. Yes. You know? Uh, so I don't have a lot scripted to talk about but i do have some bullet points um i figure that this episode can be the end of the summer of corman and we can get on to wrapping it up would you be okay with that like if we end the end corman with this episode yes yeah okay good because we did have one last episode planned where we would focus on Roger Corman as an actor, because he was in, like, Apollo 13, The Godfather Part 2, uh, Looney Tunes back in action, but it, no one gives a shit about Roger Corman, the actor. No. That's just a, a, a fun nod to put in a film. So it, I figure that that's something we can skip and we can get to. Uh, I figure after this... I'll get two episodes, and then you finish us off with whatever you want. Okay. To finish us off with. And so, I I, I think that we can agree to that. Do you agree to that, Bunny? Yeah, so long we can, we can work out what we're planning on doing from here, where we're going, that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. I'm down with that. Okay, so this episode marks the end of our... Very cheap summer of Roger Corman. We've been watching right. Roger Corman. What did he do to your foot? Uh, okay, so they've. I'm on estrogen and I'm on testosterone blockers and I'm on uh, antidepressants and then I'm on some bipolar medication and, and I wanted to raise up my antidepressants, but then they said, okay, but we'll also have to raise up your. Uh, bipolar medication, so the all of it makes me tired. Okay. And sometimes I will feel like the best way to describe it is it may be a bit of vertigo, but the way I like to describe it is every once in a while I'll feel high, but I'm not high. Yeah. Every once in a while I'll just get a bit dizzy, get a bit woozy, feel a bit out of it. So anyway. I was laying down in bed for a really long time, and I stood up, and I got really dizzy, so I went to grab my wife's dresser, where all her clothes are, 
And I guess I forgot. I didn't think of the fact that my wife has a million things on the top of her dresser. Yeah. And so one of those big ass, you know, candles, one of the big, huge ones, like a Better Homes and Gardens one, yeah. it fell directly on my big toe. And so nice. I'm walking with a limp, walking with a cane. Uh, limping ain't easy. So that's where yeah. I'm at right now. I'm limping a bit. Edibles help. I took one five minutes before we started, so it, we're on a timer here. All right. And so let's see what happens. Politics are really fucking me up right now, Bonnie. Okay. Politics where, are where, really... Where are you? Things have changed. Last we talked, a corpse was running for president. And we were going to vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. I And I had just posted my, uh, my speech at a candlelight vigil. And I put, I'm not the world's biggest Biden supporter, but the alternative is I get sent to a camp. And I don't think that people who aren't trans realize this. And so and politics have, have really been a, a negative uh, emotion. And now, oh, everything's positive. Everything's positive. Everything's happy. Everything's coming up roses. And Trump is, is suddenly the oldest person to ever run for president. And he's, he's forgetting where he's at. And people are walking out of his rallies. And he has low turnout. And, and everything's Tim Waltz positive. is adorable. Yeah, Tim Waltz is adorable. But the problem is, um, Trump won't give a shit. In Trump's mind, he, he people aren't walking out of his rallies, and he doesn't have low turnout. And if he loses the popular vote, he's not going to go away quietly. No, no, of course not. He doesn't have the balls to admit that he has lost the popular vote twice now. And so if he loses the popular vote again a third time, it, he's just going to respond with violence. And so I see the positivity and young people and, and, and I see all, all of these people being pumped and jazzed and psyched about this election. But it, I, I just can't help but seeing negative. Because Republicans are planning on winning no matter what, even yeah. if they lose, yeah. they're planning on winning. And so it, politics are just really fucking me up right now, you know? But at least we're getting a breather. Yeah, it is nice getting a breather. Yeah, and we won't have to kick them out of the White House. Yeah, that's another that's another positive. And what exactly is he is he going to do? Um, I don't know, but he's. I, he, he I agree. Has... I agree with you totally that he's probably most likely going to do something completely sane and completely violent. But to what end? You know, like like how is that going to be any more successful than January 6th was? Well, I, I can't because the last... You hear, and then, and you got to get closer to, be, to like, the mic. Yeah, you got to be louder. A microphone? Jesus. Uh, what's going to happen is that the last four years, he has spent a good deal of time putting people in strategic places so that they can basically not certify the election results in key yeah. states. That's what he's done through the last four years. Backed Trump supporters. He's backed the denial people, the people who deny that he they oh no Trump won. Yeah. He's put them in there. And they're gonna they're gonna not certify the election results and people are gonna go fucking nutso. Because what are you gonna do? I can absolutely see a uh, George Bush yeah, that's, um, that's the big fear. hanging Chad um, situation a, happening a, again. Yeah. A gore and 
push thing. Yeah. Like, well, that's what the big thing is going to come down to. Yeah. Yeah, I can absolutely see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, politics are really fucking me up. It is nice to not have to worry about our 300-year-old candidate anymore. That's that's a positive. Yeah, and trying to put him over. Yeah. The funny thing is, is that the media was like, Biden struggling with support. Uh, Biden, Biden struggles. Biden struggles during debate. Biden struggling. Uh, Biden struggling with uh, the economy. Biden struggles with, and then the moment that he dropped out, Biden will always be remembered for an amazing, flourishing economy yeah. and for his success in. And it's like, why didn't y'all mention any of that shit while he was still in the race? Because you're the media. You know? It's and why, uh, why aren't they saying that Trump is struggling, which he clearly is and always which he is? Clearly is. And how yeah. he should drop out of the fucking race. Yeah. It is fun seeing uh, the right try and figure out how to attack Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. That has been fun. I have liked that. I have liked seeing that. Yeah. The last I heard, they were attacking her because she yeah. ate a bag of Doritos. Oh, no. And it's like, yeah, you're totally normal people. Absolutely normal human beings. She she ate Doritos? What's this about Doritos? She mentioned in a campaign email that when Donald Trump was uh, convicted of all of those felony charges, that she was so happy that she ate a whole bag of Doritos. And so, of course, uh, with nothing else to attack her for, they were all over... Uh, Fox News was had all these talking heads eating Doritos. This isn't presidential. Do you want this person leading? This person is going to drive us into socialism, eating Cheetos. It, it, you know, Donald Trump. Well, Dor okay. Okay. But let's be for real. Doritos can be really dangerous. Like sometimes you crunch on one and it's really sharp and it like jams up into the roof of your mouth. And then you launch Did nuclear you weapons. It, yeah, it happens. the The thing that gets me is that it's it's that double standard that just keeps happening. Oh, sure, Trump was on uh, it, Epstein's flight logs nine times and constantly called him sometimes yeah. at three or four in the morning. That's not a big deal because he's a Republican, and uh, the bar for Republican candidates is very low. But oh my God, Obama wore a tan suit. Joe Biden ate ice cream and Kamala Harris ate a bag of chips. This is the worst political scandal of all time. Yes. Republican candidates can get away with so much shit, but Democrats are held to this higher standard, which is total bullshit. And it, it pisses me off. I agree. Thank you. Um, what else? I saw a movie in theaters uh, beyond Deadpool and Wolverine, which I love. Uh, I saw M. Night Shyamalan's latest film, Trapped. Which is his latest film? Uh, Trapped. It's about a dad who takes his daughter to a uh, Taylor Swift type concert, but the, the concert is on lockdown. Because they got word that a serial killer's there. Oh. And then you learn that the dad is the serial killer. Like 15 minutes into the movie, you learn that the loving, caring dad uh, is the serial killer. And it's... It's PG-13. So it's the... Really? It's the tamest serial killer movie you'll ever see. And when it comes to reviews for M. Night Shyamalan's latest film, Trap, there are two camps. There is, this is stupid, this is nonsensical, there are so many plot holes, it's unbelievable, 
and this is a horrible movie. Or the other camp, which is all of those same things, but I love it. This is the camp that I am at. The yeah. movie was stupid, and it was dumb, and I was laughing through a good portion of it, and it was fucking stupid, and I loved it. Okay. Just because a movie is bad doesn't mean that you can't have a bad time. This movie was bad, and I loved it. It was I, a whole bunch of dumb, stupid fun. I, I, I just don't take much interest whenever M. Night Shyamalan is mentioned. I thought the I thought the premise was interesting that you know here's this nice loving caring father who also is a serial killer and he's trapped at a Taylor Swiftian concert with his teenage daughter yeah who loves him and it, and it it's interesting and the Josh Harnett is the serial killer dad and I haven't seen him in enough to have any sort of feelings towards him he i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you what he's ever been in i think he was in pearl harbor but i don't know the, the kid from the faculty right years ago oh yeah yeah he's yeah. father I, playing age yes he is wow. father playing age now and let me tell you something if josh harnett wants to uh kidnap me and put me in his basement i let it okay just Putting that out there, if he's looking for a victim. Here's the weird thing, is that I, while watching the movie, I'm like, okay, they've done a really good job of creating a fictional, popular pop star with teenage girls. They've done a really great job making the concert look professional, and the songs are all right. And I remember thinking, like, during the movie... All of this, all of the music that this uh, artist is singing is probably on Spotify, and I'm going to listen to the, the shit out. And I have, but here's the thing. It's a fictional character in the movie named Lady Raven. It's M. Night Shyamalan's fucking daughter. Oh. It's, uh, it, this whole movie is just, like... A very bold Nepo attempt. Yeah. A nepotistic attempt to get your daughter to become a music superstar via a movie with a weird ass plot. But that being said, the music is pretty damn good, and I've been listening to it fairly regularly. So that's Trap. It's all right. The drummer from Scott Pilgrim was in it. As the mom. So it's the kid from the faculty as the dad. And uh, Kim Pines, the drummer for Sex bob as the mom. So that was weird. Oh. She's mother playing age. She's... Yeah. 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 We're getting old. It's weird. That's you know, Jim. No. This, this, this has to be stopped. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear one of these one of these fucking candidates tell me about we don't have to age anymore. Let me tell you something. Yeah, age has really been fucking me up lately. When I was in eighth grade, I discovered Public Enemy, and I was really into Public Enemy in eighth in junior high and in high school. If you went back and told like sophomore high school Steve. That eventually everyone's grandmother would be in love with Snoop Dogg and Flava Flav <coughs> from Public Enemy would be the official sponsor of the U.S. women's water polo team. Yeah. And Jaleel White would be dressed as Urkel in commercials for his new line of weed products. Yes. I, like, sophomore of high school, Steve, would not be listening to any of that because I'd be staring at my beautiful tits. 
Okay. But it's like every day I see something that just triggers my age. Like, like, like the Beastie Boys. So do I. I, So do I. I call it my bladder. Yeah. A song from the Beastie Boys was in the Super Mario Brothers animated movie. Yes. That's fucking weird. I heard the Ramones at the mall. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I was uh, mall walking with the kids, and I heard um, I Want to Be Sedated. That was a song that played at the mall. I was at the supermarket, and I heard a Nirvana song. Uh Uh-oh. Fucked up. It's really fucked up. Age is fucking me up lately. Also, I do not have a job right now. I will not be working for any certain Halloween company this year that will remain nameless. Yeah, what the fuck? They Uh, loved you last year. They did love me last year. They absolutely loved me last year. And my store was like a top selling store nationwide. Uh, and I was promised a job. I was repeatedly told that I would get a job, and it the store was really successful, so much so that the district manager who who had our store is now a regional man, and the store manager of my store is now the new district manager, and I have been dumped to the side. I do not know why I am listed internally as non-hireable. Uh, I've got two theories. Number one... Is that what was actually said? Yes. I went into the store, which was open, and I talked to one of the managers who, who I knew, and she said, yeah, I've been trying to hire you for a few weeks now, but every time I do, it lists lists you in the computer as non-hireable, so so I won't be getting a job there. Um, I'm not sure why I am non-hireable. It might have something to do with the fact that I put 30-something fake names on the donation board and then made a video about it and then posted it on social media, or maybe it's because they're bigots. I don't know. I don't know. But I was, I, they did love me last year, and they did promise me a job, and now I do not have a job. Uh, but that's fine, because this Halloween store, which, uh, again, will remain nameless, you know, I have no qualms against them, and I'm totally fine with them. And uh, also, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to badmouth them. I don't want to badmouth the company, badmouth the corporation. I like working there, that certain Halloween store that will remain nameless, and and I don't want to say anything bad about them. Like, they promise their assistant store managers and store managers a big bonus, but then they tie that bonus to the uh, amount of theft in the store in a way so that uh, it, your, the bonus that they promise you is tied to your store's shrink. And I hear from a lot of people that it's easy to steal at this Halloween store that will remain nameless. And yeah. there's a reason for it. Because whatever theft that happens in a store, the corporation will then see the theft and just remove that amount of theft from the promised bonus yeah. of the store manager and assistant store manager, and then they get the rest. So when you steal from a a certain Halloween store that will remain nameless, uh, you're not stealing from a corporation. You're stealing from a hardworking store manager and assistant store manager. This is me not saying that. And also, legally, everything I just said was fiction. 
Yes. And it was in no way about any certain store or chain of stores that pop up around this time in America. Yeah. So there you go. There's that. Whatever you buy is going to break in, in like a month anyway. Yeah. So there's that. But I'm focusing on other things. I have uh, three big shows coming up. Yes. And I'm very excited about it. In the beginning of... Uh, oh, so in November, I had a show at a college in Ada, Oklahoma, East Central University. It's pretty big. They've got a, a big... Uh, it's a big legal college. They have a big, like, law school there. Yeah. And I performed there as part of a drag show that we did on campus. And they loved me so much that they are now, they have hired me to come back. Not the drag show, just me. And I've got my own show that's going to be there on cool. campus. Spe specifically, they scheduled it on a school day so that there'll be a bunch of students that come so it's going to be on a wednesday at 7 p.m and i i've got a i've got a college show yeah and so really excited about that and then after that i will be performing at oklahoma latin pride which was an which is an all-day uh, Hispanic Pride Festival. I they want me to do two drag numbers and a story time. Ten minute warning. Ten and so minute warning. that and so that's going to be huge. They're making flyers for me and everything. And then I have a really big <coughs> show that will be happening in October. But it, it, for whatever reason, I can't talk about it. I can't announce it until September. Okay. So this is me in no way announcing anything. There is no, this is me not announcing that uh, I will be doing an hour and a half Lucha Libre story time at an art gallery, specifically focusing on the life of El Santo. This is me not saying that. I, I totally did not hear that, and, and uh, yeah, I'm nobody not did. really, really excited for you. Yeah. And there's an, and there's no way that I got the job specifically because I mentioned my love for pro wrestling and Lucha Libre and the fact that we've done a couple of El Santo movies on the podcast. So this is me not saying that our podcast in some way helped me get a huge story time at, yeah. a, at an art gallery. This is me not saying that. So that's good. And... Uh, limping a bit. Point A is a place where I've been doing story times every month, and it, it, the the owners of this art gallery, which is there in Oklahoma City, uh, in like the gay district of Oklahoma City, the yeah. owners love me and they care about me. Getting paid to do story times there, and then both of the owners of Point A. They had, at almost exactly the same time, they had really uh, difficult, personal, tragic things happen to them. So they canceled all of their shows. So oh. I so I haven't been doing my story times there. Just, I think, Thursday or Friday, they announced that they're finally going back to doing shows. But I haven't heard from them yet. And I don't know if I will still be doing shows with them or not, but I'm waiting to hear back from them. So, but I have three big shows coming up. One that I can't talk about. So. Yeah. They're, because they're a, I can't talk about it because they may or may not be an art gallery and they may or may not be really strict with the announcing of their schedule. So I can't mention my third big show in October. I will say, though, my mom is proud as fuck. Really? Which is not something that I can say often. But I'm doing two Hispanic uh, performances 
And let's just say a certain someone in Arizona is very proud. Nice. And I'm happy about that. It's not often that I get pride like that. So Yeah. I am surprised that the Ramones were able to make a movie dur- in that they were able to fit it into their very busy schedule of overdoses and occasionally playing what can loosely be referred to as music. Yes. Wow. That must have been really busy. It's like, oh, well, we can't do the film right now because Dee Dee is about to overdose, and then I'm overdosing after that. We can fit you in in September. And that's how Rock and Roll High School got made. I have a list of of bands that were considered, bands and musical uh, acts that were considered other than the Ramones. One, two, three, four. There were four different musical acts that were considered. Each one would be even worse than the Ramones. Yeah. So that'll be fun to talk about. So this week, let, 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 let me take this moment to say how much I really, really just love the Ramones. <laughs> absolutely, okay, this is gonna be love the Ramones. Are you being serious right now? Oh yeah, I love the Ramones. Okay, Always okay, have. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be, this is gonna be great. Absolutely great. As far as I'm concerned, the Ram, the Ram. The Ramones did some great things, like Beyond the Simpsons. Uh, One-fourth of the music from Wes Anderson film. Uh, what else have they done? Uh, I, I, I love their episode of Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Yeah. Uh, and a few of their songs I like. There you go. Uh, it, it, honestly, if it wasn't for the Ramones, I'm not sure how many. I'm I'm not sure if Stephen King would have been as successful as he as he was. The Ramones really helped Stephen King move along. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I think so he puts a lot of Ramones references in his books. Like there are some times when, like, a character is checking into a hotel but he wants to put in he wants to check in as an alias so he puts his name as like dd yeah and stuff like that and then of course the theme to pet cemetery i like that yeah. song that song's freaking bumping that song's bumping every halloween Stephen king but always be bumping to it at a certain store Stephen king always caught me as way more of an acdc guy yeah yeah well the cocaine probably yeah I don't think the Ramones are much of a cocaine band. No, unless no, you're they... snorting unless you're snorting the cocaine on the floor of a dirty toilet in East Brooklyn. <laughs> so there's that. So we have two movies to talk about, Rock and Roll High School and the unreleased Fantastic Four movie. But before we get to that, Maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Okay. I concur. We will be right back with more of the Pope on film after this. Do 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 that's good dancing, Maxwell. Do 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 do